Hello, it's Eric Strong from Stanford University and Strong Medicine. Today, in preparation for an upcoming series on anemia that I'll be posting next week, I'm discussing how to interpret the red blood cell indices of a CBC, such as the hematocrit, the MCV, and less well-known values like mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. So here is what a typical CBC might look like when reported out by the hematology lab. We see the white blood cell count at the top and the platelet count at the bottom, neither of which are part of the focus of this particular video. That leaves all of these, which are all about the red blood cells. Let's go through them one at a time. The first number is the red blood cell count. This is analogous to the white blood cell count. It's the number of cells per microliter of whole blood. Interestingly, while someone with no clinical experience at all might guess that this is the most important red cell related index on a CBC, anyone who does have clinical experience knows that almost no one pays attention to this number. That's because what's actually the most important about the red blood cells is not how many there are of them, but rather how much oxygen they can carry. Bigger cells carry more oxygen than smaller ones, and cells with more hemoglobin in them carry more oxygen than those with less hemoglobin. In other words, not all red cells are the same. So a more relevant number for a clinician to worry about is the hemoglobin, which is the concentration of hemoglobin in whole blood. You'll notice that there are different normal ranges given for males and females. This difference has been speculated to be a consequence of both the increased testosterone in men and menstrual blood loss in women, but there is evidence that these explanations don't hold up and it remains one of modern medicine's unanswered questions. The next index is the hematocrit. This is the fraction of blood volume that consists of intact red blood cells expressed as a percentage. What's cool about the hematocrit is that the only pieces of lab equipment necessary to estimate it are a centrifuge and a ruler, though modern labs actually don't even directly measure it at all, but rather calculate it from the RBC count and the MCV. As a general rule of thumb, the hematocrit tends to be about three times the hemoglobin concentration, a number which is just related to the units and has no magical significance. Because of the relative consistency in the ratio, when discussing patients on rounds and when calling consults, typically only the hemoglobin or the hematocrit are verbally reported, not both. Which the clinician chooses is personal preference and is likely strongly influenced by the institution and programs in which they trained. The MCV stands for the mean corpuscular volume, which is the average volume of a single red blood cell reported in units of femtoliters, which is 10 to the negative 15th liters. The MCV can be calculated from dividing the hematocrit by the RBC count as measured in millions per microliter and then multiplied by 10. However, modern labs measure the MCV using automated cell counters, which can literally measure in average the volume of millions of cells in a blood sample and then usually use the MCV to calculate the hematocrit. As with most lab tests, the normal range of 80 to 96 is calculated such that 95% of healthy individuals fall there, meaning that 5% of normal healthy individuals have quote, abnormal MCVs. So don't assume that every patient with an abnormal MCV must have a hematological problem. As we'll see next week, the MCV becomes a major consideration when categorizing anemias. For example, anemias caused by iron deficiency leads to a small MCV, while those caused by vitamin B12 and folate deficiency lead to a high MCV. In the context of clinical reasoning, the normal range is frequently rounded off to 80 to 100 for simplicity, but with a likely cost of a slight decrease in diagnostic accuracy. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin is the average hemoglobin content in a single red blood cell. It is calculated. MCH equals hemoglobin divided by RBCs. A low MCH results in the blood smear finding of hypochromia, or relatively pale red cells, since oxygenated hemoglobin is what's responsible for the cell's red color. Less hemoglobin means less red. This may be seen in iron deficiency and in hemoglobinopathies like the thalassemias. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, or MCHC, is the average hemoglobin concentration within the red blood cells. It is calculated as the hemoglobin divided by the hematocrit times 100. As with the MCH, 
Low MCHC values are typical of iron deficiency anemia and result in hypochromia, while high MCHC values may reflect spherocytosis, meaning pathologically spherical red blood cells, or RBC agglutination, the latter association of which is due to a lab artifact. And the last RBC index is the red cell distribution width, or RDW. This is a measure of the variation in RBC size. A high RDW implies a large variation in RBC sizes, and a low RDW implies a more homogeneous population of RBCs. There are multiple ways to calculate the RDW, which can confusingly give slightly different results. A high RDW on a CBC corresponds to the morphologic feature on a blood smear called anisocytosis, meaning a wide variety of cell sizes. An elevated RDW and anisocytosis on smear are both nonspecific findings, which are generally not helpful for making the diagnosis of any specific hematologic condition. To summarize, the indices which modern labs directly measure are the red blood cell count, the hemoglobin, the MCV, and the RDW, and those which are usually calculated are the hematocrit, the MCH, and the MCHC. That's it for today's video. Once again, anemia videos are rolling out next week.